get on with it. Like, just keep going. We just want empathy. We just want to actually feel heard and understood that this sucks. And we're all still, like, kids. I'm Electra. I go to Queenwood School. I'm Lydia. I go to Sydney Girls High School. My name is Jack Fard. I go to Trinity Grammar School. My name is Naharika. I go to Hornsby Girls High School. I'm Kira. My high school is Tamara High School. I'm Leslie. I go to Sydney Girls High School. My name is Jade. I'm a year 12 student at Bradford Senior College. My name is Enzo and I'm arguably the worst half of the school captains at Dulwich High School of Visual Arts and Design. My name is Freya. I'm a year 12 student at Sydney Girls High School. My name is George. I'm doing my final term of high school right now at Skeggs Darling House. My name is Nadia. I am currently in year 12 at Newtown High School of Performing Arts. My name is Sian. I go to Sydney Boys High School and my favourite subject is drama. Drama. Biology and drama. English or biology. Extension English. Extension to English. For you English or physics. Society and culture. Music. Music. Modern history. Drama in English advanced. Non-extension advanced. And yes, I know that's very gay. Straight after the HSC, uh, before you even have one. I don't really want to rush into academic stuff. Instead, I really just want to do stuff that's going to make me a better human being. I'd really like to take a gap year, travel around different continents, so like America, and I was going to go to Korea and Japan. You know, have my obligatory after school Japan trip, but I don't know how feasible that is right now. So, my plans for after school are to go to uni and get a degree in what? I'm not sure. Afters in the University of Melbourne. Early childhood and primary education. Primary education and psychology. Psychology or sociology or political economy. My fashion course. Music composition and uh, drama performance. Stage acting, screen acting or voice acting. Definitely more of the creative stuff. If there's performance involved, I want to get in on it. Definitely feel like I'm a person who needs structure. So I'll probably look into getting like a Bachelor of Education and Art somewhere and just see where that leads me. I'd like to work on a project, start a small business, or get into game dev and make an indie horror game. Slam poetry, creating more art, move out, get my own place, enjoy summer with my friends, just spending time with friends if lockdown eases. I think I just need some time to do nothing at all. That's how crazy this year has been. Year 12 in five words. Uh, Scary. Overwhelming. Overwhelming. Chaotic. Unbelievable. Confusing. It's fairly isolating. Isolated and disappointing. Very competitive, especially at a private school. Schoolwork was the smallest concern. There was and still is so much other stuff that just takes precedence over that. Underwhelming. Anxiety inducing. I procrastinate a lot, so procrastination. Uncertain. Kind of boring. Alternatively. <laughs> Uh, it has sucked a lot. Not what I expected. We all kind of wanted a better year than what we actually received. Well, that sure was something. Exciting. Satisfying? I feel like there's this whole element to it where you're about to complete everything that you've been working for for so many years. You know, could be worse, lucky prick. I've had a pretty good run of year 12, I think, and I'm incredibly lucky to have the kind of resources that I do. Yeah, unpredictable, stressful, satisfying, abrupt and tiring. None of those are positive. I feel like almost everyone will probably say this, but the most stressful part of year 12 so far has been the last two months. Uh, the weeks leading up to half year lease. Having major works due at the same time near like trials. As a student who takes science extension and drama, I have a lot of stuff to prepare. In that online learning period. The night before exams, especially online exams. I have ADHD. I struggle with anxiety. The school system and teachers and parents expecting me to be able to focus the same way I normally would. I didn't think I could do it. Cramming information and just the anxiety that I haven't learnt enough. But also being a gay student, being a gay, gay person in a very conservative school. It's been challenging, but I've learned a lot about myself and it's, it's been an experience. So my most stressful period was probably a week before our trials. I just really did not know anything. For some reason, all my knowledge evaporated out of my brain uh, and I was literally worried sick. I got a throat infection from the stress of that time. It's still incredibly difficult to sort of keep your head above water and you don't have that surprisingly encouraging feeling of hanging out in like a, a horde of anxious energy outside an exam hall. I haven't seen any of my mates in so long. 
I don't know if I'm ever gonna get to go back to school. This tiny little box and this video camera that doesn't even record at a higher quality than 144p is how I'm going to be finishing my high school career and moving into the adult world. And I won't probably won't even get to see my friends again before I graduate. Coupled with the safety and equity of doing the HSC exams. And it's just so unpredictable and very nerve-wracking at the moment. There's no news of how to get vaccinated. My second vaccination, the only date I could get was the date before my first HSE exam. Or how to just like help ourselves at all. The government have been keeping schools out of the loop. There's nothing from NESA, there's nothing from the Department of Health or Education. Really made it a lot more stressful for all year 12 students. For my school admin, I would say... Be more cohesive and straightforward with decisions regarding students and exams. There should be a lot more flexibility with the online learning. I think everyone should be able to do this at their own pace. Please recognise the fact that Selective High School is an immense amount of pressure to put onto a developing person. Our school administration doesn't do enough to actually combat the mental health problems that a lot of students at my school actually struggle with. You really need to learn to be more accommodating to your students. I feel like my school wasn't the right choice for me. The things that I struggled with in early and junior years, issues that can impact a student for years in the future, our school doesn't go into that root cause of the stress and instead tries to avoid it. Have some empathy. Kind of have more empathy. I know you're trying to do what's best for us, but... We have a pretty good idea of what we need as students and as people. And I just think there should be so much more lenience. We're probably the most impacted year group because of this. We've had to go through COVID for two years and we've just had a two month lockdown a month before graduation. And I just think they could be doing so much more to just like give us an equal chance, give us a fair go. If I was going to give a message to the New South Wales government, cancel the HSC. We don't need that extra pressure. I'm recording this the day after the HSC timetable came out and I'm freaking out. With my school, it's meant to be a mature learning environment and adult context learning center. So most of the time when there is problems, they are addressed quite directly. Whether that's dealt with or not is a different thing, but it will be voiced. Being a school captain has definitely given me the opportunity to voice my concerns with the school administration, but I think if there's one thing I would really like to pass on, it's a plea for respect for our intelligence and maturity as students. I know that we are objectively a bunch of sweaty hormonal wrecks, but we do know when something is a serious concern and when we deserve to have our voices not only heard but actually taken into consideration. You guys can't just turn a blind eye. You don't attack the root. If, if you want these things to stop, then you just have to stop the, the toxic culture that enables the boys to think that they're so powerful, that just enables the boys to um, <clears throat> think that they're dominating. You need to shape them into good people. Well, since it'd be graduated soon, I always thought the rules on piercings, dyed hair, and uniform are just a bit unnecessary. I did put on earrings just for this, okay? Since we're at lockdown, no one sees them. But I'm making a point. The world is changing, and I think we should accept that people can have coloured hair without being a hooligan. What message are they trying to send? That's just really wacky to me. For the class of 22, I would say... Enjoy year 12. Year 12 is, you know, it's supposed to be fun. I mean, it's obviously always stressful, but it's supposed to be fun. Go full out for all the year 12 activities. This is the only go you have at it. This is your last year. Don't place too much pressure on HSE. Know yourself know what you are capable of, and also know when to stop. And then finally, become friends with your teachers. Especially in year 12, you need to take use of all those support mechanisms and like the community you have around you. Don't be afraid to ask for help and special considerations from your teachers because they are willing to give you a lot. Even if you don't have a good teacher, reaching out for one-on-one -on -one help with a certain question or concept that you're confused with, I learned that a lot of the teachers that I thought were terrible when I reached out to them one-on-one, -on -one, they actually provided some decent advice. Don't be afraid to reach out for professional help. Make good study habits. Do not procrastinate. Um, that's hypocritical because that's a thing that I've struggled with, definitely. But doing the work when you have the time and when you can and doing it as soon as you can honestly will take uh, so much pressure off of you. These little things like organising assessments, planning your day, setting goals, they allow you to have some control in these times where we feel like everything 
is out of our control. Know what's good for you. Be cautious, be kind to yourself and don't overwork yourself physically, mentally or psychologically. Also remember that studying or like year 12 in the HSC isn't the do or end or in the grand scheme of things, mistakes and assessments will become insignificant. Not everyone needs to aim for a 99.95. Workplaces just, they just want people who aren't dicks. Like you can get an HR of 99, but <laughs> if it's a dick then this is not working. Year 12 is about studying, but it's also about figuring how you fit in the context of the rest of the world. Schooling is not just about academics, it's where you find your identity and how your individual self can actually make an impact on society. Prioritize your mental health because it is a really taxing experience. This year sucks. Don't push yourself to the point of burnout, especially if we are still living in this lockdown which I hope we're not for you guys. These moments are going to be special and they're gonna be a lot of fun. Just don't, don't waste it. Make the most of it. Just that's, that's all. If the year 12s of 2022 see me as being in any position to give them advice, which I would not blame them if they don't, I just say, think about the class of 2023 and 24 and 25 and so on. As year 12s, you have the most clout and your voice is really important particularly to younger kids trying to get their footing in their own education. If you're a year 12 student, kids in year 7, 8, whoever, uh, look up to you purely by virtue of you. You're the example for them of, of what they could be in five or six years time.